And welcome back. And it's that time you've been waiting for. There is no nice way of putting it. Nairobians are clearly disappointed with the state of their city. Once a shining beacon, Nairobi has been brought to its knees by crippling debt, poor service delivery, and it is literally a city that is choking on its own filth. Many residents have no kind words for the incumbent governor, whom they overwhelmingly elected. Frankly, Nairobi is threatening to become one of the biggest embarrassments to the president and the jubilee regime but a joint team from both the county and national governments is hoping to change that and they are in fact left with no choice but to resign if they fail to deliver tonight I'm hosting to my far right Nairobi County Secretary Peter Karaoke who was seconded from State House uh, to help streamline service delivery and we must say at this point that he has only been in office for some 20 or so days but there you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, next to him is uh, the PS Housing and Urban Development, Charles Mora, who co-chairs alongside Peter the steering committee um, for Nairobi's regeneration. And he in particular leads the human settlement component. And to my left is Nzioka Waita, who represents the president on this team. He is the president's chief of staff and head of delivery. So you're all welcome to the program and thank you for coming. And particularly you, Peter, for being so brave, <laughs> <laughs> if you like. Uh, I want to start with you, mm. and um, we've already said it's early days for you, but, but would you admit that the county government has let down the people of this city? Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, good evening once again. Um, and I'll say no, for a very basic reason. Um, if you are sitting a three-hour examination paper, and 10 minutes into the exam, someone said you have failed. That would be really a, a disservice and an injustice. This administration has been in office uh, for all of eight months, and the matters which you have raised, admittedly so, are grave, serious, and I'd say difficult for the people and residents of Nairobi. And that I would admit that indeed um, we are facing, facing very serious challenges. However, there has been significant work done in terms of putting in place or the journey of putting in place certain <coughs> fundamental pillars to righting the wrongs that have taken many years to build and we're seeking to address within this five-year term. How significant a blow would you <coughs> say the resignation of Polikapi Gade was? Um, certainly um, it was not written in the books that this is something that would come up and certainly that that did affect um, for some time uh, the management, I would say, of the county, mm -hmm. but His Excellency the Governor has a team working with him uh, that is able and capable to um, carry on uh, where one of their colleagues left off, and he has, he has managed well, I would say, as a governor with no deputy, in the context of running a city, and that is Nairobi, he has done well. To those who say that Nairobi's problem is a leadership <coughs> problem, how do you respond? Um, I would say that is uh, not an accurate um, analysis of the challenge. Uh, Nairobi indeed has a cumulative um, condition of many factors at play. Um, and I'll give you a quick, a quick example. When His Excellency the Governor took office, on day one, he inherited a debt of just about 59 billion shillings. That means that from day one, he was leading an administration that was in the red. And so for every demand on service delivery, for example, essentially is financing programs in deficit. Now the management of such a situation is a very, very serious matter. And I would say the governor, for, for being able to reach where he is today, able to pay his salaries on time, which was a challenge in the last administration, um, being able to raise revenue from, um, you know, from the 7 to 12 million shillings a day to over 50 to 100 million shillings a day. Those are significant things in terms of beginning to right the ship that was already looking in a different direction. You're talking about being able to pay salaries on time uh, as a win, but if uh, Kimutai Abraham's uh, tweet is anything to go by, it would be salaries for what? Because he writes in and says uh, the county conducted a rogue Kanjo recruitment for publicity two months down the line. No one knows anything about it. Nairobi is in limbo in all aspects of development. 
Um, for Kiptanui, when he says that uh, there was a rogue, what did you say again? Recruitment. A rogue recruitment. For publicity. I, I don't know what a rogue recruitment is. Number one, a recruitment is done in accordance with the law by the Nairobi County Public Service Board. Um, they advertise for positions, they interview, and that is essentially the, you know, how you recruit people into the service. Now, um, as we're talking about recruitment, there is a concurrent process that is underway. And you've had His Excellency the Governor speak to it more recently, uh, you know, around Labor Day, where he said there is a program for voluntary early retirement. These two processes are running concurrent because on one part, the county has to shed some weight in terms of personnel. Mm -hmm. And on the other, the county has to refresh its skills base, uh, technical expertise uh, coming to the county, including our age profile. And so these two things are running concurrent. Um, and I would say they are being run in accordance with the law and professionally. All right. Um, Zyoka, uh, by your own presence here and that of the PS, there, there has been clear, you know, um, very direct and very assertive, if I was to use a positive term, engagement by State House in the management of Nairobi. Why is that? Um, Nairobi is the face of Kenya. Nairobi is 60% of the country's GDP. Most importantly, Nairobi is a, a county that cannot exist without the peripheral counties around it. So you have Kiambu, Moranga, Machakos, and Kajado. All these counties which lie in the metropolitan zone are essential to the survival of Nairobi city itself. Now, the role of intergovernmental coordination is one of the national government. The reason why we are sitting here and able to sit across the table here with uh, officials from the Nairobi County government is because that intergovernmental working relationship takes into account that if we cannot get um, Nairobi right, we cannot be able to work with other county governments to strengthen their own um, growth and management and to work in a sort of collaborative way between devolved units and the national government. So ours is not really to assert anything. It's really basically for the president to be able to make this city uh, be the entry point for the country for the benefit of the entire country, not just the residents of Nairobi. Okay. Um, Piers, uh, if you would explain your, uh, your role by beginning with what this re uh, renewal project is. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much and good evening to the, the viewers. Um, so first of all, my role um, is I head the docket of uh, housing and urban um, metropolitan and public works. Uh, and uh, the urban uh, component uh, therefore th thrust me right into the mix of uh, the re mm -hmm. regeneration. So now the way we are looking uh, at, um, at, at, at the, at the uh, the situation is there are many uh, aspects from solid waste mm -hmm. to liquid waste uh, that needs to be managed. Uh, there's an issue of security. Um, so we have uh, collapsed um, the regeneration into seven thematic areas. <clears throat> and each one of those thematic areas is headed by uh, a PS. Mm -hmm. So I am heading the human settlement uh, thematic area. Uh, we've got another PS that is uh, heading the transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, there is security, there is water and sanitation. Uh, there is an issue of creating jobs uh, for people in Nairobi, education and health, and of course social inclusion. Okay. Um, and we're going to try and get through um, some of those themes, and I want to begin with uh, uh, garbage and waste management. Um, <coughs> but if I would just take a, a, a step back and Zyoka, you have all told the president that you will resign if your targets are not met, correct? Um, it's not where we don't tell the president. You, you, ha you have said that you're willing to do this. The president tells. He told you. So it's, okay. it's, you, it's, not, a, <laughs> it's not something you step forward and do. I think it's an instruction okay. that is very clear. Uh -huh. But I think at the outset, Anne, what does the Nairobi regeneration entail? Mm -hmm. What is it and what is the outcome that people should expect? Because I think largely the disconnect is what is all this about? You know, I get queries every day and people are asking me, what are you going to do? Can you do this for the county? Mm -hmm. So let me set the record straight. There is an intergovernmental committee um, 
called the Nairobi Regeneration Project. This committee is chaired by His Excellency the President. Um, the committee then has a technical chairs. The chair from the national government is the Honorable Najib Balala, mm -hmm. Minister for Tourism, Cabinet Secretary, and His Excellency the Governor of Nairobi. They chair the weekly, the monthly engagements that we have. The role of this team here is we are back office. Mm -hmm. I coordinate. My job is largely to get things from point A to point B by getting people to talk and getting things to happen. Now, at the end of this project, starting with the first 30 days that will lapse in a couple of weeks, what will Nairobians expect to see? Number one, they should start seeing a change in the cleanup of the Nairobi River ecosystem, which we can talk about in detail. Number two, they should start seeing the piles of garbage that are littering uh, our city start to disappear, not on a, um, a state, purely aesthetic PR basis, but on a sustainable long-term basis with an end-to-end -end plan for solid waste and liquid waste management. Number three, they expect to see some improvement over the medium term in the next six months of mass public transport through the bus rapid transport program. They also expect to see the kickoff of what we call the urban renewal programs, which is basically the old housing estates that are sitting you know, small bungalows sitting on quarter acre, half acre, those will now be moved into multi-dwelling units mm -hmm. to allow us to settle more people in affordable housing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They will also expect to see within the, within the same um, environment a, a, a real change in the way our roads <coughs> are managed. We have a serious crisis from uh, class B, class C, class B, class C, class D roads. Uh, where once you get off the main artery in any estate, the dilapidation of roads is, is plain for everyone to see. The rain doesn't help. Um, the, the, the vagaries in weather, particularly since the end of March, have been quite extreme. It has taken its toll on the public infrastructure. So people will expect to start seeing some improvement in that road okay. uh, infrastructure. And, and That's what Nairobians should expect. All right. from this. And we'll go through it uh, theme by theme, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little curious because you said uh, these uh, 30 days will end in a few weeks' time. By our count, uh, when this committee was actually put together, um, and one of the targets that you had was uh, to having cleared garbage from all 85 wards in Nairobi within 30 days, that will leave you six days on the clock, at least on garbage, uh, getting rid of garbage. <coughs> Do we have picture, if we have, of today in Nairobi? Let's, let's just... Take a look. So, I think, and le let's be realistic about this. Um, the president is very clear: is that if he doesn't see forward movement on any of these issues, now forward movement means how do we deal with a city that's not picked garbage for almost uh, a decade and counting? Some of the garbage that exists in the city, you know, is almost institutionalized. They are like buildings. People will give you directions based on a heap of garbage that's been there for, for years. Now, what we have done, again, is to take a very somber uh, and serious look at this to say, what do we need to start doing to clear the garbage in the 85 wards? Mm -hmm. Sustainably keep it off the streets, because that is really what Nairobians want to see. We will also be very clear on what are our asks of citizens in terms of where to dump garbage, how to segregate their garbage, and best still for the people in the garbage business, where to dump that garbage. Because that is also another problem where mm -hmm. garbage is translocated from one place and simply moved to another neighborhood to the detriment of those communities living there. Right. So, um, so there's no window dressing here. And that, that's the point I'm trying to get to you. In 30 days, you will see plans having kicked off. They're not going to see anything complete other than one or two projects which, like title deeds, which is very straightforward, <coughs> either there's a title deed or not. Mm. Um, and those will be done and uh, we'll talk a bit more about that. Okay. Um, so, uh, Peter, the, there are plans that uh, the county has recently put in place in terms of dealing with solid waste 
uh, management. Part of that was the fact that you've, you've gotten now the title to the Dandora dump site, and mm -hmm. so um, actual work can begin on that. Um, you said that you'd be creating additional landfills and enhancing capacity for timely collection of disposal of waste, uh, part of what Nzirk has talked about. How ex what, what is the process for that? Um, the thing is it, is, it is a process that involves, certainly has to involve more than the county, and I'll explain why. Um, Nairobi today is generating between 2,500 and 2,700 tons of waste <coughs> every day. Now, if you accumulate that over a period of time, months and several years, today what we have already done an estimation of how much it will cost us in terms of resources to clear this waste. We now know today 381 10-ton trucks will be required to work 24 hours a day for a period of 30 days to just clear the waste in Nairobi. And you currently have 60 trucks, 30 of which are not working. For example. So you begin to understand, therefore, the partnership between ourselves as the county and the national government is an imperative if we're even going to begin to address this problem. And therefore, leveraging resources like the National Youth Service and other national agencies, leveraging our relationships with the private sector, for example, is going to be crucial if we're going to even just begin to deal with the waste. And we also want to add, the waste problem is also a behavioral challenge. The idea that you can have a restaurant where you are serving the public, and at the end of the day, collect your waste and throw it on the roadside, is a behavior problem. And one of the things that perhaps will take a bit longer to deal with is for people to understand that the environment is just as much a personal responsibility as it is those in public service to deliver a service of collecting and disposing of waste. Whereas I appreciate the <coughs> magnitude of, of, of what you're talking about, um, all those number of trucks, etc. cetera, Nairobians just want to wake up tomorrow and not see the garbage. So, uh, I mean, where are you in terms of these partnerships to say that by this date we're expecting to have better done our garbage collection to have increased our number of trucks, etc. Do you have any specific? In fact, it is not a future date. As we speak now, the actual level of waste, uh, solid waste collection in the city has gone up by a factor of fivefold to almost tenfold. As we speak now, the thing about it is this, as um, my brother has said, some of these areas, what you say, some of the waste uh, concentration areas, you're talking about a concentration which you have to bring down, but as you're collecting waste that has been produced every day. Mm -hmm. And so, as we speak now, we have increased the frequency of collection. We have increased the number of partners that we're working with in terms of um, uh, private sector players. We have now um, um, a relationship with the national government that is, I think, within another few days, as we speak now, going to see the National Youth Service deployed um, in terms of partnership, deployed to different areas, ward-based, mm -hmm. to essentially support as the collection aspect. So for somebody like um, Coach Brian, who's asking what plans uh, you have uh, for collecting garbage at Lucky Summer Award in Raraka, I mean, can, can you confidently tell the public that if... Within a week, this mound of garbage has not been moved. Then this is the officer who is accountable. These are, this is, so would you walk us in through fact, that? In fact, and on that, I, I, like, I like your question. For the reason, we want to move away from this blanket uh, action, as it were, to essentially let the public know there is a designated person who is being held to account in that particular ward from the county level as well as the national government level. Whom you can ask, why is it that this waste is, this condition is remaining unchanged? Where can we get that information? Will, we, will the county government be publicizing yes, these names, so. numbers? Certainly so. Okay. You'll, and in fact, the, you, you'll see a cons we have started what we call a prototype of a command center that is um, stationed outside the, the Mishuki Park area that is just next to the North River. Mm -hmm. That shall be replicated across all of our 85 wards in Nairobi where it shall be clear whom you can call, whom you can hold to account, 
in terms of not just waste, essentially the full spectrum of service that the citizen needs or requires in the city of Nairobi. Okay, we'll wait to see that uh, rolled out. I just want to move from that uh, to the question of affordable <coughs> housing um, real quick. P.S., um, so of course that is a major issue um, for the county. I mean, and it's, it's in everything. Not only do we, have, do we not have enough houses, even the ones that we have have not been properly built. Um, there's apparently no urban planning that was taking place for quite some time. How do you intend to tackle this? Um, so you've, you've hit the nail on the head. Um, we have a situation whereby uh, not only the issues that you've raised about poor planning, um, we also have a systemic issue whereby um, we have focused on the 2 or 5 percent uh, and, and that is where the, the, the construction of the, the housing has been in the last many years. And then what that means is that the majority of Kenyans uh, do not have access to decent housing. And that is why you see also that there is uh, sp sprawling uh, slums that have come up in all our urban areas mm -hmm. uh, just because of that deficit. So how are we going to tackle that? Now, for us to tackle that, it's important to understand what has led us to, to, to get there. Number one, we know that the issue of land um, is, uh, you know, land in Nairobi, for example, is the most expensive in the continent. Um, and partly because land is held for speculative uh, purposes. Mm. So what are we doing about it? As a government, uh, again, working with the county and national, uh, we have come together and we have put, uh, we, we are doing a land banking and we have identified parcels of land that are owned either by um, SOE like uh, Kenya Railway, uh, you know, the pension funds. And we're putting all those parcels together we are also uh, made a decision that we are going to put the infrastructure because in the past the private sector puts the infrastructure but if you put the private sector puts the infrastructure they also lay a margin uh, or markup on, on on top of that and that is a pass through cost uh, the other issue uh, that has led to unaffordability is the issue of construction cost um, which is extremely high in this country so how are we going to tackle the issue of the construction cost a we are adopting what is called industrial techniques uh, and that is uh, we are standardizing the units okay so um, you know all the doors the windows are going to be standardized and what that means is that we are able to do mass production and anything that is done at scale you can you, you know you're able to bring down mm. uh, the cost we are also adopting uh, alternative building techniques um, uh, precast prefab and uh, you know all manner of um, alternative uh, building techniques why because we can also reduce the time taken uh, to, to build because can you take long uh, you've already you've borrowed money the cost of capital so you 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 are in a situation whereby it, uh, the cost uh, keeps on going up the other issue is on um, just processes. Uh, today, to, if you uh, want a mortgage, to get a mortgage uh, or a transfer uh, of title, it takes you nine months. Okay, the, the, here is a developer, the units are done, and it takes them nine months to exit. Okay, mm -hmm. and that, that there is cost again of, of capital. So we are working with the other uh, agencies like uh, you know the, um, uh, lands uh, ministry. Uh, we have re-engineered our processes, mm -hmm. and we have a target of moving from nine months to one month. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let's just talk about financing a little more in depth. And there's the the mortgage refinancing company that is uh, supposed to be set up. Mm -hmm. What are the timelines on that, and how is it supposed to work? So the mortgage refinancing company was set up. It was registered at the AG offices. Uh, to, uh, last week. Uh, and now we're going through uh, the recapitalization uh, or capitalization of the KMRC. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is happening is we got tier one capital uh, where national government has um, uh, is, is putting in 20% of the of the tier one capital. And then the circles and the financial institutions have until end of next month uh, for them to be able to put in their uh, tier one capital. Tier two capital um, is, so tier one is equity basically. And then tier two, uh, we are dealing with the D DFI, Z, uh, you know, development finance institution like the World Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's already um, public knowledge that they have committed uh, to finance uh, between 150 to 250 million dollars uh, into the KMRC and also Af AFDB. Mm -hmm. We're also speaking to uh, EIB, the European Investment Bank, uh, KFW, which is the German um, uh, development bank. There is a lot of interest uh, in terms of participating on the KMRC side. Can you give us any specs regarding the kind of homes, the affordable homes that we're expecting 
to see sprout in Nairobi? So the typologies that you're talking about have been uh, have been done in in such a way that we are looking at the various household in, uh, how, uh, the, the various household incomes. So we uh, started by defining what affordable housing is. And if you uh, go back to Jamhuri Day last year, when His Excellency uh, the President set up uh, this big uh, the, the 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 big four, uh, his definition of affordable housing is whatever you're paying rent today, mm -hmm. you should be able to afford uh, to own a house, and that house must be decent. Okay. So, if you're earning, you're in the minimum wage, it means that you're not excluded. So, uh, our program then has what is called a social house. Um, and they are, uh, the social house, uh, the ceiling uh, is 600,000 uh, at the moment. So, we, we're finalizing the, 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 the numbers. But at the moment, we are targeting 600,000 for, uh, you know, 20 uh, square meter uh, unit. And then you move to, uh, if you're earning above 15,000 to 50,000, you qualify for what we call a low cost house. All right. And in the low cost housing, you've got different ty typologies uh, from uh, one bedroom, two bedroom. Um, at, and, um, you know, they range between uh, 800,000 to 2 million. Uh, so there's quite a bit of uh, a range. Uh, and then if you're earning 50,000 and above, we say that you can actually walk into a bank and you can qualify for a mortgage, but that mortgage is still not affordable. So there's still a bit of TLC that you need, and mm -hmm. that is um, where the KMRC is going to come in. So the, the people in 50 and below mm -hmm. uh, are going to uh, join a scheme, which is called a tenant purchase scheme, which is uh, going to be undertaken by National Housing Development Fund. Okay, so how will you identify you know, who actually qualifies for these houses? Because the first thing that comes up is that you will find those with the money buying you know, th those are the concerns that the public have. They'll end up buying a whole block of housing and those who are actually meant to benefit from it won't get anything. So how will that be done? And of course, that is a developer's joy because you want the units to be sold as quick as possible. But that is the reverse of what we want. So we have set up a, a structure whereby it is one household, one house. And the way we're going to do it is that the, the whole process of registration to allocation of the unit, there is no human interface. So you, there's an online platform. You go, you register. You, you obviously provide certain uh, key information, for example, where do you want to own a house? So that the demand is, act, is, is not guesswork. So we know that there are 2,000 units that are needed in Meru, mm -hmm. all right? And then uh, we match that against what the counties are giving us because as you saw from last week at devolution conference, counties have started signing uh, with, the, with the national department. They putting land uh, into, into play, all right? And therefore, once you register, you tell us where you want to live, you give us the information, there's pre-qualification, and then there's a, an automatic allocation. So you, you're told you qualify for a social house. When will this begin? It's, uh, we are, by end of this month, we are done with the development framework. We're going on a public participation because it is part of our uh, constitution requires us to do that. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you uh, that, um, and I don't know how many days now have gone, we're trying to count now, uh, 25 days since um, uh, you know, this uh, directive we got from His Excellency, mm -hmm. with 90 days from the time he gave the directive, we are breaking ground on the first one. And, and um, you, you know, especially for those uh, be, you know, below minimum wage earners who should equally benefit from affordable housing, how do they get on an online portal to, mm -hmm. to, to put this in? The Huduma Center. Information. Yeah. It's all at the Huduma Center. So they can, you can walk, walk to Walk into a Huduma, Huduma Center, Center. Uh -huh. they will be encouraged to carry their national IDs, to apply for a KRA PIN certificate mm -hmm. because one of the key prerequisites is the one household, one home. Because the intention here is not to benefit people who want to take an arbitrage opportunity to enrich themselves. That won't happen, not, not on this program. And this program is different in so many ways because the government is not taking its capex and building itself. This, this program is so tied with the private sector that uh, the, the room for gerrymandering and the kind of things we have been seeing in the past mm -hmm. is very small. Mm -hmm. The final allotment for a house will be plain and simple. It will be a lottery, Sim similar to what is happening in mm -hmm. neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. So if you're invited and told you qualify mm -hmm. for a house within, let's say, the social housing component, which talks to the, the below minimum wage, the minimum wage mm -hmm. earner, mm -hmm. is that for example, in that category, there may be only uh, 20,000 units available within a given year and uh, 40,000 applicants. 
the fairest way to do this thing is a blind lottery. Okay. Where they are selected at mm -hmm. random mm -hmm. and based on an algorithm that has no interference, favoritism, or any other lens within which that is being viewed mm -hmm. in order to allocate that house. All right. Gents, uh, let's take in some feedback uh, quickly and, and hopefully we'll be able to deal with the other two platforms of infrastructure and uh, healthcare. Um, being Charlie, says Nairobi CBD is pathetic, road south of Moy Avenue have portals that are large enough to hide livestock. Back street lanes are filthy with garbage, stinking to high heavens, etc. Um, another one still on roads, Noel Wafula, you say, is there any uh, plan in place to address the poor conditions of Nairobi County roads? Um, he's writing from Kibra. Um, let's see some of the, the feedback that is coming on, uh, on our screen. How will you know that service delivery has changed or improved? Is there currently data that shows the current baseline? And will you be introducing metrics with KPIs for county staff? Okay, so let's start with uh, those ones. Um, because you, you've talked about the accountability of individual officers. So is there a, a b baseline data uh, that you'll be using, metrics, KPIs? Um, and you'll recall, um, before... The, His Excellency the Governor was elected. Uh, when they were campaigning, they released a publication called The Chronicles of, of, of a City Mismanaged. And it had very in-depth data on the state of Nairobi in just about every sector possible, whether it is in terms of waste, water, housing, roads, so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of information in terms of where was Nairobi when this administration took over. So to answer that question, is there a baseline? Certainly there is. Mm -hmm. On the second half of the question, in terms of are there KPIs and how do we then deal with the mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. issue? As we speak now, um, we have a team of our county human resource development, our county public service board, and the executive, essentially recalibrating our, what we call our incentives and sanctions policy and essentially trying to recalibrate our perform what we call a performance contracting framework. Mm. To do what? Every person now, whether senior or junior, mm. will have very specific targets. When you wake up in the morning, there is a thing you are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And that thing, we can be able to measure going forward. And okay. as you speak now, mm -hmm. that framework is being worked on. At the end of this week, um, we hope that draft policy will be in place for tabling before the assembly, mm. and once adopted, shall be rolled out as official Nairobi City County policy for improving performance with respect to service delivery going forward. Since you're still talking mm -hmm. of uh, performance, is another one. It, it, this is real time feedback, by the way. Um, uh, Jorowa Pests, okay, you say, do we really have a policy framework or just 100 departments overshadowing each other? Total embarrassment for two governments doing nothing at all. Shame. I think, and the, the, the measure here is very simple. <coughs> we have time. We'll come to Christmas. You have a question. Is the city clean? Is it not? When it rains in November, uh, October, November, and we have the short rains, mm -hmm. Is the water going to accumulate again in the in the usual spots along Uhuru Highway and the other places which we know have, have uh, clogged uh, drainage? Um, will there be garbage? Will the river still be dirty? Those are the metrics that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, personally, I'm, I'm not so much uh, into the science of measurement because I believe in really the more tangible and physical things that need to be seen mm -hmm. and touched by people because that's what the residents would like to see. But having said that, there is no silver bullet. This just requires us to button down, accept the reality of where Nairobi is today, and start to deal with it. There is also the question of the civic duty which the residents have, mm -hmm. um, and which we expect the county and the relevant national government offices to enforce. For, for what is it that you think Nairobians are doing that is contributing to the problem? They throw bottles out of the windows, they leave cigarette butts, they open businesses and direct their <laughs> effluence onto the street. You know, these are things we know people do. Mm. And it's not a lie. I mean, and we just need to accept, you know, maybe it will be years of under enforcement mm -hmm. or wrong approaches uh, in terms of an enforcement perspective. 
But there's also a self-regulation mechanism which every citizen must have. Mm. What do you do with your garbage when you're through with it? Okay, Nairobians, you know yourselves. Let's take another one. Um, what are the said intergovernmental bodies doing regarding, one, the severe traffic delays coming into the CBD, um, two, water rationing and water supply cartels, three, proper drainage and water management. If you'd start with the traffic, and perhaps, the PS, you could also tell us what happens in Nairobi once it rains. If it rains for two minutes, 20 minutes, two hours, two days, you're not going anywhere in the city. So what happens? Um, and I think you've got to look at it, uh, not just when it rains, first of all, um, uh, I've had the benefit of traveling in uh, other, um, you know, uh, mega c major cities. Uh, but Nairobi, we have perpetual jam, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there are some things, again, we're talking about uh, behavioral stuff. And you can throw infrastructure at many things. You cannot throw infrastructure at bad behavior, all right? So, um, for example, I think we've gone into a place where even when traffic lights are working, you still need a policeman, mm -hmm. all right? So, the, f first of all, we need, um, uh, it, it's, a, it's a joint effort. Uh, there is an, in, uh, a personal uh, responsibility, but also uh, the rule of law, you know? Um, you know, so I think that is where we have to start as basic as that, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. Now, with respect to the, the, the bigger plan, um, we need a mass rapid transit system. Uh, in, in, in the county. Um, and one of, again, uh, the issues that we've had for many years is just this culture of just studying after studies. We are harmonizing a study that was done, I don't know when. Mm -hmm. There's a story that is told that uh, I think some guys from county went to Bogota to, on this f uh, you know, study mission. Mm -hmm. They went, they saw the Transvilano, uh, and they liked it, and they said, give us the blueprint. And they were told, no, you have it. And they they, they thought maybe you're saying Kura people had come here to study also. They were told, no. When we wanted to put this BRT, we were told that Nairobi has the best BRT, but on paper. Our ability to implement is, is, is very poor. And I think this is what you're going to see very different with this uh, new dispensation. Okay, if you could just deal with water, uh, which was a part of that question, uh, but yeah, just from somebody else, Jose from Kahawa Wendani, you say, my question is, why is there a lot of water rationing? Uh, and we have a lot of rains uh, at this moment. Why? Uh, so l let's start with that and, and the cartels in water. The, the issue of Nairobi's water is a lot bigger than... Um, cartels at the reticulation end. These few bowsers that you see running around here is, is just the tip of the problem. Every day, Nairobi consumes uh, 500, gets supplied 526,000 cubic meters of, of water. Um, is what cubic liters of water. That's what comes in mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. The pent-up demand is closer to about 750,000. Uh, cubic meters of water per day. So from as we speak today, there's just not enough water. Assume there were no leaking pipes, no cartels, no diversion. There would water be no... Harvesting. Uh, now, the city is not quite designed for water harvesting. As I said, Nairobi relies on its existence on the metropolitan zone. So very few places in Nairobi can do any effective form of water harvesting. If you have a 10,000 liter tank, it will fill after 10 minutes of rain, you know, and then you consume it equally fast. So the real opportunity is what has the government done to put into place a sustainable solution for Nairobi's water? Mm -hmm. Today, your water comes from three primary supplies. There are a number, but you have Dakaini, mm -hmm. of course. You have uh, Sasamoa. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Kikuyu as the primary suppliers of, of water. As we speak, um, we uh, have already started new programs to deliver water into the, into the county of Nairobi. Largely politicized and misunderstood, but absolutely necessary for Nairobi's continued existence. So the Northern Collector mm. is m mission critical. Mm -hmm. Right. That has to happen, and it's, well, it's work in progress. The Northern Collector takes water from Moranga, up until Dakaini, and it goes into the Kigoro treatment works. Now, um, those treatment works are currently in the course of expansion mm -hmm. and uh, ready to should be ready within the next 18 months to deliver 140,000 mm -hmm. meters cubed of water.
into the city. You then have um, new programs, so Ruiru 2, which is being funded uh, jointly with the French government, which is an expansion of the Ruiru um, Dam. You then have um, uh, Karumende, which is also a new uh, dam that is currently being built. All this water is coming into the city, assuming the growth rate of Nairobi County stays flat. Would it be correct to say it's going to be at least 18 months before we can see mega relief mm -hmm. with this rain notwithstanding mm -hmm. because the rain is pouring overhead. So all this rain is actually ending up in Kirichwandogo, Kirichwakuba, the Mbagadi, and going into Athi, Athi River and heading down to the sea. Okay. Um, so gentlemen, it's unfortunate that we are out of time and that we've not been able to tackle public transport and healthcare and many other issues. So whilst we are all on air, I, I want real commitment that you'll be back on the show so that we could continue with this discussion. Peter, you will come back again. Certainly you? so. In yes. fact, we, uh, please invite us so that we can... Uh, <laughs> please invite. You're invited. P.S. I have your commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming we still have our jobs, yes. Um, <laughs> and that's a big assume, isn't it? All right, let's just take a look at your feedback real yes. quickly. Everybody's writing in so much. Thank you so much for your interest on in our topic tonight. Um, let's see what you're saying. Fixing Nairobi simply needs hardworking men and women, not necessarily to be politicians. And actually, Nan is on our panel tonight. Uh, another one, the county has not made any effort to put development control guidelines and detailed area plans after the previous regimes approved the new plan. Without proper urban planning, we are beating around the bush. Um, I'm told I really do not have time to take any more. Um, but thank you for writing in. Um, and you can engage this gentleman, I believe most of you online. Zyoka, your Twitter? Yes, I am. Um, your handle is? Uh, at Nzioka Waita. At Nzioka Waita, are you on Twitter? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. At P.S. Charles Hinga. At P.S. Charles Hinga and... Karaoke. <laughs> and karaoke. <laughs> Just look for a guy called... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to help you with at that. The okay. I okay. generally have uh, not dealt with that stuff much. Okay. All right. Mim to machinani. When to machinani, is it? Really? Okay. Uh, that's a new one. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our program. We've got to run. Uh, we'll be back with this topic hopefully sooner rather than later.